So today I want to start a bit of a new series, so it's not going to be too different from the regular content, so don't click off yet. What I want to do is start talking about the whys of the things that I do on my computer. So why do I use Vim? Why do I use a tiling window manager? Why do I use ZSH? Things of that nature. So the first one I want to start with is something very simple. So why do I still use Arch Linux? Because there is tons of other distros out there, so why don't I pick another one? So that's what we're going to try to answer today. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So I guess we can just start from the start and talk about the Arch Installer. So the Arch Installer, I know a lot of people will meme about it, but in reality, it's actually very, very simple to use. All you need to do is just copy and paste a couple of commands and then change a few things here and there, like your locale and a couple of things like that. But for the most part, it's all just copy and paste. So the installer is very simple to use. Now, the nice thing about having a minimal installer is that you don't get a lot of extra junk that you're not going to care about. So just pick something like Ubuntu, Zubuntu, Kubuntu, Lubuntu, stick whatever letter you want on the front of Ubuntu and you get a new distro. And with distros like that, they come with a desktop environment, which I already don't care about, but they also come with a bunch of other pre-installed apps, like a web browser, a text editor, a bunch of other stuff. Some of it I'm going to use, some of it I'm not. So I'm probably going to want to pick a different browser, so I might as well just install whatever browser I want without worrying about some pre-installed one. The text editor, I'm just going to use Vim. I don't care about Nano, I don't care about Emacs, I don't care about all of the other stuff. I'm just going to use Vim, so I don't even want those other ones installed. So I might as well just pick something minimal that doesn't bother to install any of that. So if I want to install exactly what I want to install, then I can go ahead and do that. In my entire time using the Arch, I've only actually had to use the installer, I think twice. And that's only because, so we had the first time where I actually first installed Arch. The second time I broke something, it wasn't an Arch problem. It, I'm pretty sure it was a me problem. I, I don't know exactly what I did but I did something to my config directory and that caused everything to die. So I did a reinstall and everything just started working properly. But even though it's a minimal installer, you don't really touch it too often. So it doesn't really matter that it's not a very simple graphical one. But as I said, it's not really complicated to begin with, you just copy and paste. Now Arch is also a fairly lightweight distro. It's not as lightweight as something like, if we're gonna use an Arch example, we can pick Arch Labs. It's not as light as that, but it's light enough for a modern computer. Obviously, if you can use something a bit older, maybe, maybe it'll be a problem. But because of how light Arch is, it's probably not even going to be a problem. It's going to definitely run better than running, say, like Ubuntu on it, or even worse, running like Windows 10 on it. So in the end, even though it's not the lightest of distros, for most use cases, it's probably going to be fine. Now, because of the minimal install, we'll go back to that just now, because of the minimal installer, which I mentioned just before, it makes Arch very, very easy to configure. Now, I don't mean it's easy as in it makes all of the process easy. What I mean is there's nothing to actually get in your way. So you don't have a pre-installed GUI with like a desktop environment or a tiling window manager. You can install whatever you want. So if you want to use a desktop environment, you can install KDE, you can install GNOME, XFCE, whatever you want. Or if you want to be like me, you can use a tiling window manager, you can use BSPWM, DWM, Awesome, anything like that. There's no reason why you have to use one specific one, unlike with some of the flavored distros where they come pre-installed with something, so it kind of pushes you in a certain direction. So if you use like the KDE version of Manjaro, it kind of pushes you into using KDE. Obviously you can get rid of it, but because you already have KDE pre-installed, you kind of don't really feel like doing that because you've already got it there, so you might as well just use it. So you don't even have to install a GUI with Arch if you don't want to. You can just use it in the TTY. I wouldn't recommend this myself. I use too many GUI things to actually justify this, but if you do want to live in the TTY, you can do that on Arch and there's nothing stopping you. Now, the next thing is kind of related to my YouTube channel. So I know that a lot of you guys use Arch or you use some Arch flavored distro like maybe Arco, Manjaro, things like that. And the nice thing about using Arch for this is that if some like Arch specific problem crops up, I can help you guys out. So if I was using Gen2, if I was using Void, if I was using Ubuntu, if some Arch specific problem came up, I wouldn't really be able to help you guys out because I wouldn't really have the contacts to help you. Now, obviously, I could read online about it, but I wouldn't have that first-hand experience trying to fix it. And I think that that first-hand experience is going to be very useful for problems like this. Now, Arch is a very stable distro. I know some people like to say it's not because it's a rolling release. I haven't run into any problems except for one thing. When there was the switch from 
um, Compton to Pycom. That's the only problem I've had that required manual intervention. Most of the time, it's gonna work perfectly fine, so you're not really gonna run into those problems, but maybe somewhere along the line, there'll be some specific Arch problem that you guys will need some help with. And being on Arch, that makes it much easier for me to actually help you guys out. So I did mention that Arch is a rolling release. So if you don't know what a rolling release is, then basically what it is, is you continuously get updates. So if you take something like Ubuntu, for example, Ubuntu is not a rolling release. Ubuntu has release versions, so 19.1, 20.1, so on and so forth. Now, those are specific versions of Ubuntu, but Arch doesn't exactly have that. Now, Arch has different versions of the kernel, so you'll get like Arch 5.5, Arch 5.5.1, Arch 5.5.2, those aren't releases of Arch, they're just the kernel version. So you don't actually have a specific set of software that's released for this specific version of Arch. Stuff just gets updated as time goes on, basically. So it's kind of rolling along with the updates. Whereas with Ubuntu, as I mentioned, it's got a set version. This is Ubuntu 20.1. This is Ubuntu 20.1.2. Arch doesn't have that, though. So... You might think that this kind of leads to instability, and in the past, maybe it did, but there's so many people who are working on Arch at this point, and there's so much information out about it, and if something does happen to break, you're gonna hear about it on Reddit within like maybe five minutes. So back with, for example, the um, the Compton PyCon problem, as soon as that happened, I was like, okay, um, what's happened here? I went on the internet, looked up, uh, replace P Compton with PyCom, instantly found a result. Because that's just how quickly information is moving about this because there are so many people. If you were using a rolling release that wasn't for such a popular distro, now I'm not really sure of any other rolling releases, someone's going to tell me down below, but if you were using a rolling release for, let's say a distro that had maybe 100 users, so that's infinitesimally smaller than Arch, that would be very, very unstable because you just don't have the user base to check that everything's going to be working fine. But... Arch doesn't have that problem. If Arch ever did die down, which I expect some point in the future it eventually will, then yeah, it wouldn't be as stable. But as it stands, Arch as a rolling release is very stable. And because it's a rolling release, it can very easily facilitate the AUR. So the AUR, if you don't know, is the Arch user repository. So on Ubuntu, on Arch, on all your standard distros, you've got your, like your, your standard package repo. Now the AUR is something where just literally anyone can put up packages. Now you might think that this is very insecure and as I said, if Arch didn't have a big user base, it would be a security nightmare. But Arch doesn't have that problem. So the reason the AUR is so great is because there's so many people who are actually checking stuff out. You have hundreds and thousands of people auditing every single package. There's gonna be some that don't really get ordered that much, but any of the even remotely popular ones, you'll see tons and tons of comments saying, this broke, this broke, oh, this is cool, this broke, this broke. It's gonna be very difficult for security holes to actually crop up. Now, they will happen, and some people will miss stuff, but stuff like this tends to get caught really quickly just because of how many eyes are actually on it. Now, obviously, on other distros, you could go ahead and compile everything, and you can do that on Arch as well. But the nice thing about having the AUR is you can download something called an AUR helper. Now, what an AUR helper does is basically makes interacting with the AUR function just like using your package manager. So I'm using something called Yay. Yay is designed to work very similar to Pac-Man. If you don't know what Pac-Man is, Pac-Man is the package manager on Arch. Okay. So Yay functions very similar to Pac-Man. So... When you use Yay, you can interact with the AUR pretty much the exact same way that you interact with your standard package manager. So it's a very consistent process along the way. Now, obviously, you shouldn't do this for everything because if you do run to something that is a security hole, the AUR helper isn't really going to let you see exactly what's happening behind the scenes. It's there to help you and, I guess, hide away some of that process. So for really popular applications, it's perfectly fine to use an AUI helper, but if you're gonna be downloading random little things, I would recommend doing it manually just because it will probably be a bit more secure just so it doesn't try to do something like delete your home directory, for example. Now there's one thing I did forget to mention about a rolling release, so we'll go back to that for just a moment. Because of the way it updates, where you don't have just set version numbers, you have continuously rolling updates, you always get the most up-to-date software, which 
for me is really important for two reasons. So one, I just like having the most cutting edge software and two, it's really useful for the channel. So if I wanna test the newest version of Tmux or I wanna test the newest version of Firefox or the newest version of Vim, whatever it is, if I have a rolling release, then the updates will keep rolling and rolling along and I will always get the most up-to-date software. This is assuming obviously that the rolling release has enough people to actually maintain it. If it doesn't, then obviously that's gonna be a bit of a problem. But Arch doesn't have that problem as I've mentioned because of how large the user base is. And this also funnels down then to the Arch base distro, so like Manjaro, Arco, things like that. And the last thing on here is that ultimately distros just don't really matter. And I know I've said a bunch of reasons why I like Arch, but if I was going back to picking a distro right now, there's not really too much to distinguish between each of the distros. Mainly, the big thing to distinguish between them is if it's a set update or a rolling release. Anything besides that kind of doesn't really matter. Now, obviously I mentioned the AUR is really helpful and that's just a nice little addition to Arch, but Really all it is is a helper to compile software. You can do all that on any other distro. It's just a really nice addition that comes with Arch. Now, because of this, there's not really been any compelling reason for me to actually switch. Yeah, I think that Ubuntu is cool. I know someone's gonna hate me for that. Yeah, I think Void is cool. Yeah, I think Gentoo is cool. Yeah, I think the different versions of BSD are cool. But really, there's just no reason for me to switch to anything else. There's one thing I would like to try out and that is Bedrock though, but the problem with Bedrock is I don't know how stable it is right now. So if you don't know, Bedrock is a meta Linux distribution. So what this means is it's kind of like a abstracted out Linux distribution. So you can use features from a bunch of different distros. Like you can use some like Debian features. You can get the cutting edge packages from Arch. You can use the AUR. You can use Gentoo's Portage. You can use some like Ubuntu libraries, you can use some libraries from CentOS. You can just pick and choose stuff from everywhere. Now, I think this is really, really cool. And when I get some time to try it out, I do want to try out Bedrock. Right now, I'm kind of happy with my rock solid distro though. Arch is, it's not going to break unless I intentionally do something. I don't know how stable Bedrock is. It can be very stable if you want to put the work into it. But I think that for right now, I'm going to stick with something that I know works. And maybe in the future, I'll try out Bedrock. I think that it's going to be pretty cool when I do try it out, though. So, you know what? I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So, if you like this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you like the idea for this series, then let me know. And I'm going to be more than happy to keep making them. So I think this is still very similar to a lot of the content I normally make. So I think this one, it should probably do well. I'm not really sure. But this would give me room to do things like why I don't use Windows, why I don't use various things, or why I do use things. And I think that you guys might get something out of this. Maybe it'll give you a better understanding about why I make the choices that I do on my computer. So if you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all my social links. So that'll be like my Discord, my Telegram and all of that other stuff. So go check that out if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates. I've also got my donate links down below. So if you want to donate to the channel, then I've got my Patreon and various other methods. So feel free to use any of those. But as always, you don't have to if you don't want to, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms. So that'll be my BitTube and my library. So feel free to check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.